Hey, it's Greg from Flybubble here. Let's talk about landing setups. So I'm flying down here in some new area in the Pyrenees. I've never been here before. I'm guessing you haven't been here either. We're going to pick a landing field, do a nice setup, and I'll talk you through it, tell you what I'm doing. So we're approaching this village on glide and I'm not really sure what the wind's doing down on the ground. There's no indication, there's no smoke, there's no wind socks. How am I going to work it out? I want to pick a nice field, but the wind direction is critical. So first thing that I always do when I come down to a landing setup is at this sort of height, I do a gentle 360. If you do a 360 turn, and you look at where you're being drifted in that circle. If you do a steady circle, it'll, it'll become an oblong in one direction. And that'll tell you which way the wind is pushing you. Once I've done that, I point into wind, what I think is into wind from that circle. And I come onto a little bit of brakes and I just, just hold it for a little bit. And I'll try and look down and identify my ground speed. So I'm going to pause it there. You can see my shadow bottom left of the picture. And I'm now pointing into what I think is the wind direction. I've got a little bit of break on. And I try and imagine myself running across that field and trying to chase my shadow. If I think I can run and keep up with myself, then I'm probably pointing into wind. Because <laughs> that means it's about 20 k's an hour or something like that if I'm sprinting flat out. If I don't think I've got any hope of keeping up with that shadow, then I must be going downwind. So that's a little trick you can use to just set yourself up. Now I'm going to assume that this wind is the same between my height now and the ground. That's why I do it fairly close to the ground. Um, there's still a possibility that the wind could be different in a shear layer below and underneath a shear layer. There could be a different wind flow. So as well as that, I'm looking at the trees. Those are my only other indicators I can see here. And you're looking for the sort of silvery backs of the leaves, the shiny side of the leaves, where the wind has flipped them over. Um, and as you get lower, you might be able to start to identify a little bit of a push on the trees. You can even see it from this height. There's something coming down from the right. So have a look at this area. Where are you going to land? What are you going to pick for your landing field? Uh, things that, are, that stand out in this picture that I can see. You got some livestock across the valley on the field there. So I try and avoid the livestock fields and try and find something that's nice and green. Um, a lot of the fields are sloping. So on the far side there, not so easy to land on them. Uh, I would prefer to land on something flat-ish. And down in front of me, I've got a nice big green field. But if you, if you look really closely, you can see there's a power line cutting along just up from the bottom of the picture. It's running right to left and it crosses over that field. And that's a major hazard. Okay, Electricity cables are just to be avoided completely. Um, probably your biggest riskiest hazard. I mean that's instant death so <laughs> let's just stay away from them completely. Um, so I'm going to try and find something on the other side of the road and what's standing out to me is that really nice double field with a big tree in the middle of it. Uh, it's nice and big and green and there's enough space to get in there so I'm going to look at that one. So now I'm approaching coming a bit closer. You can see I'm looking at the field. The camera's attached to my helmet so where I'm looking is where I'm looking. Uh, that side quite big trees and lots of slope terrain. I don't even want to look at that for landing. The village itself is quite compressed and lots of houses so there's nothing in there and I'm just lining up for that field still looks good you can see there's a car on the road so the road's probably out having traffic on it and let's just pause it there you can see down the side of the road which is pretty normal you've got a telephone line so you don't want to be crossing low and you don't want to try and land on the road because you're going to hook into the line with your wing um, I've got my power line running where my shadow is at the bottom of the picture. There's one pole there. There's one pole 
uh, beside the little white shed and there's another pole by the trees so that's a power line hazard and I'm keeping myself I'm basically flying down the power line now with enough height that I know I, there's absolutely no question I can glide clear of this so I'm using that hazard as my sort of gliding line um, keeping it pretty close underneath me so that I can dive over it very easily into the field at any point um, I'm not directly over it um, I suppose in case in case there's some massive shear layer that you don't know about and my glider folds up and I descend straight down um, I'm not actually over that hazard I'm close to it so that I can bail off to the left if I need to there is an emergency bail off field which I have spotted to my left you can see that long brown strip that's quite a nice uh, run out so I could approach just over the red roofed house and glide across the green strip and try and aim to land in the brown strip but there the risk is that it does slope down towards the valley and the same thing applies to this field on my right um, ordinarily you'd expect the wind to be pulling up a valley like this and going up towards the mountains behind me so normally you'd have the wind I'd be now be pointing into wind in this position and if you were trying to approach into this field with that situation you'd have to be very careful because it is sloping downhill and what looks like a big field could actually be a bit of a trap because you're going to glide down this field get light lift with the headwind coming up the field and you might end up gliding over and over and over all the way down the field and getting stuck with the trees at the far end so that's something to bear in mind that if you do approach a field like that you want to make sure you've lost all of your height really really far back so that you know you can get into it but in this situation the way that I've judged the wind I've now got the wind at my back and I've got this field on the right I want to get into so let's go downwind now I'm looking at my speed over the ground and thinking mm, it's not particularly fast this way either so I'm guessing there's actually very little wind at all and I might find that I've got a slight downwind component as I come into this field from this side but that's okay good flare will get rid of that so I'm now coming over the end of my uh, downwind leg I'm going to do a base leg across here across the back of the field and the whole time I'm looking for signs of wind any indication that there's low level wind um, quick look over to the left to see the other trees nothing there back into the field let's have a quick squeeze at the wind right let's stop it there we're looking at this as our setup now you can see our main field that I've lined up with the big tree on the left I've got a really nice long green approach that I can land there but you've got that singular hazard in the middle of the field the big tree when you've got something like that you've got to be careful of target fixation if you're looking at the tree and you're trying to avoid the tree you're going to land in the tree so let's look at that strip of grass to the right of the tree pick a spot there and aim for that spot I now ignore the tree altogether it's not an option I'm not flying there I'm landing on the grass off to the right you can see uh, another green field which would have been a very good option to land in um, with the given wind direction I'm pointing pretty much into wind now and that would have also been a very good option if it wasn't for the power line that crosses directly across the middle and I would stay away from power lines if I've got any options other than the power line field I'm going to use them but it's there it's nice to know just to place it you've got that emergency there if I came in with deep breaks from this back right corner I could easily land there as well so I've got a little bit too much height I don't want to end up gliding 
past this field and into the tall trees at the far end. So I'm going to be make absolutely sure because the wind's so light and I might be going a little bit downwind. I might have got it wrong. So let's get rid of that last bit of height. I do a nice gentle turn and I'm going to do another nice gentle turn here, leaning in, keeping the speed nice and high. So I'm not doing any um, slow speed turns through the turbulence. And now I'll go hands up and I'm gliding into the field. Remember to watch the grass, not the tree. Keep your eyes on the grass where you want to land. And now I'll go full hands up. Nice speed. Keep the glider fast. And I'm touching brakes now. Plop, plop. Touchdown. Cool. Another successful landing. I hope that's helped you identify how to get into this sort of field where you haven't got any wind indication. Remember to do your 360 nice and, uh, nice and high, but not too high, so that you're getting relevant wind information for your landing. Point into wind, a little bit of break, just to double confirm that your ground speed is reduced. Then you approach your field, looking for any hazards, pick the field that you've got the nice clear um, approach. And remember that you can land uphill. It'll help you. It stops you overshooting the field. And don't forget to get your legs down at about treetop height. So you avoid any risk of landing on your bum. Come in with good speed, hands up, and right at the last minute, give it a good deep flare and hold it in. I wish you many safe landings wherever you're flying. Right, glider in the shade. Very disappointing. Just a big glide with no thermals all the way from up there. Down to here. Oh, that's a lot of effort for the top to bottom. We're going to get some food and drink. Really merry.